Donc, euh, bonjour à tous. Euh, moi, je vais vous présenter... Good morning, everyone. I'm going to speak to you some experiments that were carried out in Crayapam with other partners from the sector on uh, cover crops in lavender growing. Why did we start implementing these cover crops? Well, it started about 10 years ago in order to fight against the uh, stolber blight. What is this type of blight? It comes from a phytoplasm, stolber, which is transmitted by a, a leaf hopper, and it leads to a loss of yield in the uh, field. So some plots have been pl uh, planted with cover crops, and we also had a control uh, plot. And that's what you can see on the left-hand side. Several plots were uh, sowed uh, or planted at different times. And we did a grading of the stolberb light in the different plots. And overall, there is less blight when there is cover crops compared with the control plots without cover crop. It was confirmed with the capturing, capturing of the yellow tests, that is to say the uh, phytoplasm vectors on the right-hand side graph. It is the number of, of yellow tests captured based on the surface of uh, coverage on the plot. About 20% of uh, crop coverage means 6% less of these uh, leaf hoppers that are captured on the plot. So it has a sanitation, a sanitary effect on the culture if from the very first year you use cover crops. Another issue with lavender fields uh, that ha has been really uh, ravaging, it's the wheat niche. We looked at five plots. We uh, looked at the damage in 2021. So for plots that had been planted in 2015, 2016. So in 2021, we looked at the damage, looked to uh, uh, damage due to uh, this niche. And we saw that there was a reduction of damage when, from year one, there was cover crops compared with a control field. This observation needs to be investigated further. But if three out of five plots get beneficial effects, it is promising. If we uh, reintroduce new cover crops every year in these plots, it may have an even more beneficial effect on these niche uh, damages. We also have sanitary uh, issues for lavender hybrid, and we also observed effects on resilience to drought of these crops. These grading were made on plots that were coupling blight issues and drought issues. On plots that had been covered only for year one of planting compared with perennial cover crops, we could see that these two symptoms, blight and drought effects, were reduced. So there is a beneficial effect of cover crops on the culture's resilience, especially given, uh, given drought uh, and climate change situations. Another important aspect for cover crops is the control of weeds. This is a trial that was implemented uh, at Denise's uh, place, or farm. We conducted this over two years several monospecies co uh, coverage. These are the different species that you can see on the graphs. So the green bars are the quantity of biomass that was produced by the cover crop. And purple is the quantity of advantage of weeds, sorry, that was harvested on the plot. With uh, phacelia and uh, brown mustard, 
there is very little uh, weed growth. So depending on the species chosen for the crop coverage, crop cover, you can control some adventists, some weeds. So we don't know if it's about the allelopathy of the culture or if it's just a competition effect because the biomass of these uh, covers was very big. But in any case, we have weed control uh, as an effect. Overall, cover crops that are implanted on year one of plantation are usually uh, cereals, crops, to, and they enable us to control weed the whole summer season long. After destruction in July, August, when it's left as a mulch, it uh, keeps the uh, effect on weed going. There are several factors on weed control as well. The density of germination and how fast the uh, cover grows to start competition with weed as early as possible. Regarding winter covers, they're usually sowed in September and they enable reduction of weed through the winter because they produce a lot of biomass through the winter, so there's a fast competition uh, setting with weeds. Last positive aspect of cover crops is to improve the fertility of soils. Firstly, thanks to the biomass input, uh, especially with uh, there's a freezing of the biomass, it stays there. And then there's destruction. After destruction, it's either incorporated after being uh, um, cut or it's left there on, su on the surface. And so it's a tool that we've used on the left hand side of the screen. It's a tool that we have started using to measure the inputs of uh, biomass to the soil. We estimate how much biomass is produced on the hectare, and then we use the Mercy tool online to that calculates uh, uh, stable carbon, phosphorus, um, potassium, and so on uh, in the lavender uh, field soil. And an important aspect is that it protects the soil. Usually in lavender and lavender hybrid plots, uh, they're usually pretty steep. And so erosion is a real issue, especially when there's a lot of rain. It's also sometimes difficult to go into uh, the plot with uh, mechanical tools uh, where it has rained a lot. So the soil is kept in place, protected with the roots of cover crops. So it protects from erosion and it makes it, uh, it stops the running of the runoffs uh, at the bottom of the plot. So it protects the soil and it improves the fertility overall. So, looking, after looking at the positive aspects, we wanted to look into yield. So this graph shows the yield uh, compared with no cover crop control fields. And uh, at the bottom, the, it's uh, horizontally, it's the blight percentages of uh, symptoms in no cover crop fields. So overall, there is a loss of yield with cover crops in the first years. But on year two, three, four, when there's a lot of blight, usually, so the right-hand side of the graph, you can see that uh, there's a stabilization or even a gain in yield when there is a lot of blight. So year one, has a lot of a lot of uh, well in year one there is a loss of yield but uh, after it can actually uh, stabilize or even increase uh, uh, on the culture. This is the follow-up of a plot at a farm of one of our collaborators. This is a critical cover in uh, the first year of uh, planting. 
If you accumulate a yield in essential oil on those years, it, the yield is rather stable between cover crop and no cover crop. So after a while, yield does stabilize and remains equivalent. It depends on the plot. We have varying results. But the trend is that there's a stabilization of yield and uh, less blight observed. The two uh, bottom graphs are showing that. Um, I also wanted to show you a project that was presented to you. It was the recital project. We looked at the hydric competition between uh, lavender and its cover crop. The results that we found is that cover crop does, has no positive or negative impact on the uh, water stress of the lavender crop no negative impact on the growth. It didn't lead to water stress that would in, impair the growth. So I think you were, exp you were told about that yesterday, but I wanted to tell you that it's a per perspective that we need to work on. We need to assess the water competition and nutrition competition between lavender and the inter-row cover crops because we need to look at it when the lavender's needs is at its highest. Does the cover crop need water at the same time, nutrients at the same time? So this is something we're going to look into in future projects. Overall, if you to choose the right cover crop, you need to look at a series of objectives. If your objective, because you're in a strong, uh, highly uh, damaged area by uh, Stolber blight, you need to implement cover crop in year one of planting, usually cereals, something that will be maintained until after the harvest in July, August, because this is when the leafhopper starts flying, and that's when we can reduce the effect of this pest. If the objective of the uh, farm is to improve the soil quality, for instance, so uh, putting, inputting uh, organic matter and uh, reviving uh, the life of the soil and so on, we need to choose a crop that has a very high level of biomass produced. You can also uh, choose various uh, crops with uh, leguminous, legumes. Sorry. If you have a lot of steepness on your plot, you want to fight erosion. So you need to cover the soil in critical times in the winter when it rains more. So you need crop, uh, cover crops that are stay throughout the winter. And even producers are starting to look into perennial cover crops to have the soil protected all year long. If you want to reduce weeds or keep uh, water in the soil, you need to have a, a water economical uh, species. So there are a lot of avenues to work on to assess the effect of winter cover on the production uh, every, if you plant them every year to assess the impact on yields and also as I told you at the beginning the effect on uh, disease uh, symptoms. The observation on three plots, can they be confirmed on other trials elsewhere? It's also interesting to look at the increase of biodiversity on the plot and also the reduction of uh, phytosanitary products runoffs uh, in lavender region. Sometimes there are uh, nitrogen uh, issues with water pollution because of nitrogen-based fertilizers. So overall, there are still limitations that are being studied in various projects throughout the sector. In, uh, negative effects from competition between the cover crop and the main culture, although uh, equipment hindrances because we don't, the sector is not equipped to sow uh, to 
cut down or to manage these cover crops. So they're usually self-made, self-built, and it takes some work from the producers to start working on these covers. So we need to improve that aspect. And last aspect, we need to choose the crop depending on the objectives of the farm. Uh, the choice is really, really key. Each species has its own uh, pros and cons. So overall, to sum up, the three strategies of cover crops that have been implemented, the summer cover crops are those I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, those that were used to really tackle stolber blight. Usually they're based on uh, cereals, crops, uh, but now um, we have uh, a mix between cereal and legumes, um, but usually it's still uh, cereals planted in February, uh, but they are left until July and August, and so there is a competition with lav lavender hybrids. So to tackle this competition, more and more winter crops are uh, looked into, multi-species crops, and they stay there all winter long, produce biomass, and are destroyed still a bit early because of the fear of competition. But they could actually be left up to March or April to really take all the biomass advantage and bring in as much organic matter to the soil as possible. And the last strategy is uh, perennial cover crops that could be either spontaneous or uh, sowed. This hasn't been studied much in the sector, but it presents a lot of advantages that are worth studying to reduce competition because this is the main fear of using perennial crops. But if you have species that are easy to control and that develop well, it could be an avenue for perennial crop and soil coverage all year long. Thank you for your attention. It's uh, what I had to tell you about cover crops. <laughs>